Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1, the Bible reads, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. See, that Old Testament story from Numbers chapter 9, that's not just, oh, well, that was just the children of Israel. Oh, they just looked at God. No, this is something, hey, are you risen with Christ? I am. Are you risen with Christ? Seek those things which are above. Be concerned about those things. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. That is where your heart ought to be. That is where the things that you truly love and desire ought to be on things above. Not on things on this earth. The Old Testament stories have great examples of the actual extent to which we should be looking to the Lord. I mean, just how, how far does that really go? Think about the, the manna that God gave to the children of Israel. Another example from the Old Testament, from the book of Exodus, where, you know, in, in Numbers, they're looking for the Lord and they're picking up and they're physically moving. Every time God moves, they're moving right with them. Well, daily food. Their sustenance, just to survive on a, every single day, they have to rely on God. Rely that, hey, the food's going to be there the next day. The food's going to be there the next day. Food's going to be there the next day. Just do, hey, this is what God told me. God commanded us. He doesn't want us doing anything else. He wants us just to go out and collect this manna and eat it. It's good for us. It's going to sustain us. And it's going to be there because God promised it's going to be there. Exodus 16, you have to turn there. Turn if you would to Proverbs chapter 3. Exodus 16, the Bible reads verse number 4, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And then in verse number 16, the Bible reads, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded, gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. These things were done to teach the children of Israel to always be looking to the Lord and to be dependent on him. And it was taught, the, the, the manna was given them to teach them that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, God wants to see, are you just going to obey me? Are you going to listen to me? And he's like, I'll take care of you. I'll sustain you. All the things that we can be distracted with, God's already promised to take care of those things for us. We don't need to worry about... How are we going to eat and, and how are we going to survive in this world? Because God will do that. If you set your affections on things above, God will take care of you. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. This is another one of the harder points of having faith. Well, my understanding says this. Well, I don't see how this could possibly happen. I don't see how I can have a child when I'm 100 years old. I don't see how my wife could have a child when she's 90 years old. I don't see how that could happen. You know, this type of situation, that, you know, now, I'm, now that I brought that up from, from this morning sermon, leaning on your own understanding. See, people today, what happens when they feel like they can't have any children? They're going to lean on their own understanding and say, oh, well, the doctor says I'm, in, I'm sterile. The doctor says I'm infertile. The doctor says I can't have any children. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go to man, and we're going to go to the IVF, and we're going to go to uh, the, the test tubes and see if we can create life and have them do this. And yeah, there's going to be some death, and some of them aren't going to make it, but you know, we're just going to go this route anyways. Don't lean on your own understanding. And see, this is applicable in all areas of life. We don't want to start getting too, you know, smart for ourselves, thinking that we know it all. That's right. 
and not trusting, hey, God is able to do the impossible. If God says to trust in him, if we see over and over again, God's the one that opens up the womb. Why don't we believe that? If God was able to do that with Sarah, you don't think God can do that in your situation?